is scheduled for one fall. about an intriguing matchup two of the premier teams in the world wrestling federation squaring off yeah but i just can't see what the hearts can do here the hitman is a great technician but stud and bundy are too big and even as strong as the anvil is what can he do against these two well bret hart has already taken stud off of his feet and as well as being a great technician the hitman is also a master tactician and no doubt he and the anvil have a plan for this match You're right, Hart has got stud down and he needs to keep him there, but that's easier said than done. The hitman working on those giant legs trying to remove that vertical base. If John Stud is on the mat, then his size advantage is no factor. But he's back up. You say it's no factor, but he still has incredible power in those legs and he was able to kick the hitman off. And you know, the thing about a guy like Stud, when he delivers a move like the backbreaker, it's twice as devastating as the average wrestler. And here he comes, the walking condominium. This should be interesting. Two big bulls in there now. Oh, and Bundy picks up the anvil like he was a toddler and applies the squeeze. Randall's fighting. The irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Look at the power of Bundy. That's a 300-pound man. He's manhandling. And now Big John Stud back in there. And that's the key for Stud and Bundy. They don't have the stamina of their opponents. They need to tag frequently and apply short bursts of power. The brain no doubt thrilled. The game plan for his men is working to a T thus far. I think that was a mistake. They allowed Neidhart to make the tag when they had him right where they wanted him. Oh, and the hitman, it was good work initially, but Bundy just swatted him away like a fly. The hitman able to kick out of that pin attempt. Another mistake, there was no need for Bundy to get involved with the anvil there. 
And the Hitman doesn't need a second invitation. It's too soon to think about pinning King Kong Bundy. And that was smart by Bundy, rolled to the outside to catch his bearings. But now hard out after him. Oh, and what a counter. The excellence of execution. Bret Hart is truly that. The Hart Foundation working like a well-oiled machine. Into the cover. But no... in the hitman it's just so difficult for a guy like bret hart against a stud or a bundy as good as bret is he just isn't able to let up for one second it's like trying to fight off a grizzly bear it's impressive how well he does it but ultimately the bear wins Desperately trying to reach his corner and make that tag to the anvil. Bundy's just playing with him. Oh, and a big avalanche in the corner, 450 pounds, and that may be it for the hitman. But no, Neidhart makes the save. I don't know if Neidhart did his partner any favors there. This just prolongs his punishment. And where on earth is Bundy going? Look at this! Oh! I can't believe what we've just witnessed. 450 pounds splashing down from the top rope, and there was nobody home. But look at Bundy. How tough is that man? takes out the vertical base of stud measures the elbow and all of a sudden the pendulum swings and the momentum is with the heart foundation you know that's a brilliant tactic that bobby heenan has instilled in his men every time the tide turns against them they drop out to the floor for a breather brilliant some might say it's cowardly it's the anvil continuing to dominate and now he's looking for a submission no way surely stud touched the ropes there come on ref Stud leveraging his way out. That was a nice move. The anvil, a house of fire in there. comes the heart attack. Nailed it. This should be it. But no, Bundy to the rescue. It's all breaking down now. A pure six brawl in there. Oh, 
What a clothesline by the anvil. Into the cover. Yes! Today, Gene Okerlund sat down to talk with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper, as we sit here in an empty Silver Dome, just hours before what could be your final ever match, I have to ask, what is going through your mind right now? Well, I'm just thinking about what to have for supper. You think I'm worried about this? This is just another fight. I've been fighting all my life, and every time could be the last time. I live with that reality every day, Paula. Do you? There's a lot of bad blood in this one, Jesse. Absolutely. And that's because of the blatant disrespect shown by Duggan to his royal highness. Are you kidding me? It's back and forth in the early going here. And Jess, what's going to be the key for either man here if they want to win this one? It's pretty simple. If it's a wrestling match, Race will win. But if it breaks down into a brawl, that'll suit Duggan. Although Race can brawl with the best of them, I fancy Race in this one. Knee to the breadbasket. And an elbow drop by the hacksaw. And just like that, Race turns the tide. What a wrestler he is. Is he kidding? He thinks he's going to beat the hacksaw like that? Yeah. And I tell you, Jess, we've seen some nice wrestling moves from Jim Duggan. 
And listen to these fans, 90,000 strong, and they all love the hacksaw. Race taking a moment to recoup. He's the thinking man's wrestler. I think he's rattled. The king don't get rattled. See? Beautiful gut wrench suplex by Race. What a master. Yeah, but this is blatant eye gouging in the ropes. Come on, ref. Race working over the leg. If a man can't stand, he can't fight. And look at this. Where's Race going? Oh, my goodness. Did he get him? I'm not sure it was high risk. I think the hacksaw tried to block it at the last second. I think it was six of one, half a dozen of the other. Oh, and a big knee to the face. Duggan coming in at high speed. That's a good way to lose a few teeth. If he caught him on the nose, Duggan's going to have a couple of black eyes in the morning. Absolutely. slammed by Hacksaw into the cover. No, only a two. Race isn't beaten yet. Far from it. And of course, Heenan to the rescue. That's just good management. Yeah, I should have known you would be of that opinion. Suplex coming up. He nailed it, and how? Duggan dodged the knee, connects with a big right hand. And Duggan turning it into a slugfest, and he's right to do it. And again, the weasel sees his man in trouble and feels the need to interject himself. Pop him one, Hacksaw. That's a disgrace that you would condone something like that. Bobby Heenan is the disgrace. And Race looking for the submission victory with an abdominal stretch, but I just can't see the Hacksaw quitting. He may have no choice. He always has that choice. Clubbing fist by the hacksaw. And again, driving those shoulders into the midsection, and race is going to struggle for oxygen from this point. Swinging neckbreaker race has continually had an answer for whatever Duggan has thrown at him. And now Heenan has thrown a chair into the ring. What on earth is he thinking? Belly to back suplex by the King, and I think this one may be nearing its conclusion. No, that was close, and had the referee not been distracted by that chair that Bobby Heenan put in the ring, he may well have counted three. Heenan may just have cost race this match. And again, Bobby Heenan interjecting himself. The official needs to eject him from ringside. Hey, Duggan's the idiot that keeps falling for it. And Race unable to take advantage of it this time. He just needed the opportunity to catch his breath and regain his bearings. And the hacksaw setting up for it. He senses victory is close. Oh, did you see that? What a counter by the king. Race now looking to end it, but Duggan had it scouted. Oh, and another big knee. I'd be amazed if Duggan hasn't suffered a concussion by this point.
Race ducks the clothesline. Oh, but not that time. And again, Duggan is dumb enough to get into it with the brain. Heenan didn't even start that one. Of course he did. Back elbow, down goes the king. And the hacksaw looking for it again. He hit it, and down goes Race for the win. Yes. Big Hacksaw victorious over the King at WrestleMania. Tonight is the night. It may well be the final night of my professional wrestling career. But that's okay because I have made myself one promise. No matter what happens, Piper, if by hook or by crook you somehow manage to do it, you somehow manage to end my career, I am taking you with me. My professional wrestling career is very important to me, but right now, continuing my career comes in second. The most important thing to me is ending your career. I tell you, Gorilla, I know there's a lot of bad blood here, but everything aside, this should be an incredible match. Boy, you said it just two of the very best in the prime of their careers, and that is the prize, the Intercontinental Championship. And we're underway. And look at that, immediately Rude wants nothing to do with the macho man. Mind games, Gorilla. He knows how keyed up Savage is. Rude's just psyching him out. 
And look at Rude acting as if he wants to get his hands on Savage. Oh, hold me back, ref, please. And now they finally lock up. And it's Rude with the early advantage. Stop to show off. You can't do that against the Macho Man. Oh, and what a gut wrench suplex. And the Macho Man taking out weeks of frustration, and he's doing it right in front of Elizabeth, which has to feel satisfying. And Rude is taking another powder. Oh my goodness, did you see that? Wow. The Macho Man soared through the air like a missile driving Rick Rude into that Spanish announce table. But look at Rude, what a competitor. Oh, and Rude drove the Macho Man's head onto the floor. And those mats, they're only about an inch thick. They don't offer much protection. They're more decorative than anything. Rude made a mistake. He decided to go and pose for Elizabeth. And if anything was going to revive the Macho Man, it was that. And Rude finally gets this thing back in the ring. That's the only place he can win the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, but he wasn't in there for long. Incredible. Savage almost dumped Rude on top of Elizabeth. The referee really needs to get control of this one. There has been hardly any action inside the ring thus far. Atomic drop. Rude just wants to stay out of Savage's way. There has been no let up by Macho Man. Oh, but there's an opening. Rude saw it and he took it. And look at that. The brain placing a steel chair in the ring. I don't know what he's thinking. If his man gets disqualified, he's not going to win the Intercontinental Championship. And Savage with the body slam. No, just a one count. And now Savage going up. He may be looking to end it. No, Rude had it scouted. And now Rude with the cover. I have a feeling it's going to take something really special for one man to put the other away here. This match and this title mean so much to both men. And Rude showing off to Elizabeth, let's not forget, this is about more than just the Intercontinental Championship. Rick Rude has crossed some lines in recent weeks. Hey, it's not Rude's fault that Elizabeth finds him irresistible. All women do. It's a problem for Rick and one I can relate to. Please. Rick Rude is in control now. The Brain's game plan has worked perfectly thus far. 93,000 plus on their feet. They're at a fever pitch here in the Silver Dome. It truly is a happening. Nice reversal by Savage. And now Savage clawing at the face of the Ravishing One. Turnabout is fair play. And Elizabeth begged Savage to let go. She didn't want Savage to damage the face of Rude. She did not. Oh boy, I tell you, it's a back and forth contest here. Both men so evenly matched. I wouldn't want to have to call which way this one will go. I agree, although I think Rude is edging it if it were scored on points. But, of course, Rude has to beat the champion. Savage don't have to beat Rude. True. But we know what sort of champion the Macho Man is. He doesn't take the easy way out. That's true. Randy Savage is a great champion. I can't deny that. Oh, and look at that. When the Intercontinental title is on the line, men will pull out all the stops. The cover. 
incredible. Savage is still kicking out at one. Oh, and Rude got caught. He was going high risk. Get in there, ref. He's choking the man. A lot of emotion spilling forth from the Intercontinental Champion. And now Savage looking to win it. No, but that was closer. It was. That suggests that Rude has spent more energy than Savage. And that's got to be a concern for the brain. Oh, and look at that. Flying crossbody. Look at that weasel. You know, the key there was Savage wasn't able to turn the crossbody into a pinning predicament. That extra second was what allowed Rude just enough time to recover. And again, Savage took a second too long. Rude stacks him up. But no. sent over the top and all the way down to the floor. That's a 12-foot drop. Uh, I think Savage just wanted a few seconds to recuperate, even if it means giving Rude the same. No doubt about it. Both competitors have given it their all here. Back body drop. Savage, will this be it? Will he hit it this time? No, he's not looking for the elbow. Oof. Double axe handle from the top. That may do it. Oh, and look, Root is in trouble, and doesn't that weasel know it? Rolls him up. This is it. No, there's too much fight left in the champion. Suplex. And Rude looking for it. Rude awakening. He hit it. He hit it. We've got a new champion. And Rick Rude. No. The Macho Man kicked out. I don't believe it. You and about 93,000 others, Jess, including Rick Rude and the Brain. Forearm smash. Did you see that? A little wink for Elizabeth. Rick Rude needs to concentrate on putting the Intercontinental Champion away. Rude hammering away, but what else can he do? He has thrown everything at the Macho Man and hasn't been able to put him away. Another rude awakening. There is no way he can withstand another rude awakening. And what's he doing here? He's exposed that steel turnbuckle. He's going to ram Savage's head into it. Well, if he does, he should be disqualified. Wait a minute. Did you see that? See what? Rude. Rude head. No, please. We've got a new champion. Rude is the champion. <laughs> Look at that. Rude pulled something from his tights. I didn't see anything. And more importantly, the referee didn't see anything. A real miscarriage of justice here. A better person that'll stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight with me all the way than the big boss, Andre the Giant. 
WrestleMania 3, the biggest main event of all time. The heavyweight champion of the world, Hulk Hogan, and the challenger, Hulk's former friend, Andre the Giant. When I saw him out there with Bobby the Weasel Heenan, I knew he was different. He's sick and tired of you and what you stand for. You're the one that for three years as world champion used this man. It can't be so, Andre. Listen to me, day one, man, when I set my eyes on you, brother, you're the reason I got into professional wrestling. You were like a god to me, a role model. You're the one that took me all the way from nothing to the world title. What are you doing here with him? I'm there for one reason, to challenge you for a world championship match in the WrestleMania. We're friends, Andre, please. You can't believe it? Maybe you'll believe this, Hogan. Tore my shirt off, man. When you tore the cross, you tore the heart and soul out of all the little hopsters, man. Not just me. If you wanted a final shot, all you had to do was ask me. I'd have gave you anything, man. Andre, you were bigger than the world title to me. Believe me, WrestleMania 3 will be your last lesson. Oh, wow. This contest is for the World Wrestling Federation of the And they are ready here in the Silverdome, 93,000 plus at a fever pitch to see the two best teams in professional wrestling today go head to head for the right to call themselves the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions. And I got to get your thoughts, Jess. Who do you make the favorites for this one? Well, we know the advantage is always with the champions because they don't have to win. They just have to not lose. But Demolition have steamrolled every team on their path to these titles. And I just don't see them falling at the final hurdle, especially with Mr. Fuji's guidance. The devious one always ready to lend his men a hand, figuratively and literally.
Oh, and look at that from Axe. Do you know the raw power required to do something like that? An Axe going up top. We don't see this very often. And did it pay off? Did it ever? And now here comes Smash, a nice teamwork by the challengers. Smash looking to end it early. Nah, you're not going to pin Davey Boy Smith that quick. I don't care who you are. Absolutely not. Smash needs to focus. He doesn't want to be turning his back on Davey Boy Smith. Smash made a mistake, just like you said, Jess, and I think the referee took a bit of collateral damage there. Gut wrench suplex from the prone position. That is highly impressive by Smash. Demolition certainly have their supporters among these 93,000 strong. Oh, lucky flip by Davy Boy. Smith needs to not try and do it all by himself. He's been in there a while now. He should tag in the fresh dynamite kid. I think he heard you, Jess. Double snap suplex by the Bulldogs. Oh, Dynamite got caught. That was great ring awareness by Smash. Look how quickly he was able to shake the cobwebs. And I noticed a little cheap shot by Axe as well. Hey, the world tag team titles are on the line. We've already seen one championship change hands here. Rick Rude cheating his way to the Intercontinental title. All that matters is what the record books say, and the record books say Rude won, and he has the belt. Yeah, but all I can say is if Rude and Heenan thought they were dealing with an irate macho man before, they ain't seen nothing yet. Demolition have been incredible here. The Bulldogs just haven't been able to get going. Highly impressive thus far by the challengers, but never right off the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions. Axe and Smash have been able to ground the Bulldogs. If the champions are to retain their titles, they need to pick up the pace and hit the challengers from above. Because at the minute, this match is only heading one way. Is that a choke? No, Axe had his foot on the man's chin, not his throat. I have to begrudgingly acknowledge that that is what the devious one brings to this team. He knows how to guide his charges to bend the rules right to the limit without getting disqualified. Davy Boy has seen enough. Well, tough luck. He can't just charge in there. It's a tag team match. He should be disqualified, although that's probably what he wants to take the cheap way out and retain the titles. Don't be ridiculous. The champions have never taken the easy way out, and look at Dynamite now. And now here comes Davy Boy, refreshed and ready to go. And look at that, the power of Davy Boy. A backbreaker submission with Smash perched on the shoulder of the Bulldog. Come on, ref, turn around. A Fuji to the rescue there, interjecting himself when he has no business doing so. 
hey, he's demolitions manager. He sees things we don't, and he has every right to bring them to the attention of the referee. Please. Is he thinking power slam? It's nailed it. But of course, smash there to break up the pin. Hey, it was poor ring positioning by Davy Boy. He slammed Axe right in Demolition's corner. Davy Boy with a headbutt. And Davy Boy Smith is a one man wrecking crew. Look at that by Axe, just when you think you have him right where you want him. Oof. Drops him face first on that turnbuckle. That's a rare mistake by Axe. Threw Davy Boy right into his own corner, and Dynamite was able to tag in. And Dynamite looking to end it. No. Smash moved out of the way of that drop kick. Maybe that'll do it. But no, thanks to Axe, we'll never know. But Davy Boy puts Axe out of the picture. Now, can the Bulldogs capitalize? Look at that by Smash. Quickly evening up the odds. How smart was that? see it axe perched up there yes demolition decapitation into the cover for the titles new champions new tag team champions stepping through the ropes and into the ring to meet Hulk Hogan in the biggest title match of all time. I want to get your thoughts. Gene, you will see me now, and I'm going to the ring and bury me. It's not going to take me too long to come back right in the front of the camera with the world championship belt around my waist. Bobby. Oh, I can feel it. Oh, the adrenaline's going. This man right here is going to make me famous. He's going to become the heavyweight champion of the world, and I'm going to go down the history books as the manager of the world's heavyweight champion. I'm ready. Hogan, you better be ready.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the career ending match. The loser of the match must leave the World Wrestling Federation forever. This is it. For one of these two men, this is the final time they will ever step foot inside a World Wrestling Federation ring. And immediately, Mr. Wonderful taking it to Piper. There is so much animosity here, so much bad blood. I truly believe the World Wrestling Federation is not big enough for both men. They simply cannot coexist. After this match, they will no longer have to. And Orndorff laying in those body shots to Piper. We'll talk about taking out frustration. Orndorff has been like a caged animal waiting for this moment. But Orndorff can't let rage blind him. He's been smart and used his brain to get Piper into this situation. But if he lets the fury take over, he'll make a mistake. And no one capitalizes on a mistake like Roddy Piper. Case in point. to the eyes by all rights that should be a disqualification i think we'll see more leniency from the official here no way is he going to end a man's career on a cheap disqualification oh piper went high risk but orndorff evaded the elbow and how often do we see roddy piper go to the top rope not very often that tells you what this match means and that he will go to any means to get the job done Oh, and there goes Piper over the top rope and all the way down to the floor. I hope this doesn't end in a count out. What an awful way to lose your career. And look at Orton. He's edging closer to the situation here. But if he's thinking of interjecting himself, he might just want to rethink it. If he touches Orndorff, then Piper will be disqualified and he'll be gone. Orndorff is almost goading the cowboy. 
And why not? Like I said, how often has Orton's interference saved Piper? But if it happens this time, it just may condemn him. Ooh, and Piper was just rammed headfirst into that ring post. Well, that's not very smart, is it? Orndorff could have taken the count-out victory there. Mr. Wonderful has a point to prove. I believe he wants to end Roddy Piper's career in the middle of the ring. Yeah, well, I think you're writing off Roddy Piper a little here. Look at the man. This is one of the toughest men on the planet, not just the World Wrestling Federation. I won't argue with that, and by no means am I writing off the Roddy one. He is one of the best, no doubt about it. Piper going high risk again. And this time he connects. This to end Orndorff's career. Oh, and Orndorff got the shoulder up. Barely. That was very close, Gorilla. Close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Yeah, but that suggests that a lot has been taken out of Mr. Wonderful already. No doubt about it, and Orndorff may now struggle for breath after Piper dropped him. Throw first across that top rope. Oh, and the sleeper! Piper has the sleeper! This is it! This is the end of Paul Orndorff! 93,000 people going crazy. They can't believe what they are witnessing. And Orndorff is fading. But he's not giving it up, Jess. It may not matter if he goes unconscious, he's finished. And still, Mr. Wonderful hangs on. Ring the bell, it's over. No! No, it is not over! Unbelievable. Small package! No. And there we go. Orton to the rescue. Bulldog. And I believe Mr. Wonderful has been busted open. Again, Paul Orndorff is able to kick out. Yeah, but he's in bad shape. Roddy Piper smells blood here, literally. Oh, Piper raking that boot across the bleeding head of Mr. Wonderful. And now he's hammering at it. Like I said, he's a shark drawn to blood. And look at that slap at the end. Insult to injury. I think he's going for another sleeper. No, Orndorff evaded it. And now Mr. Wonderful firing up. Oh my goodness. Where's he getting this from? His career's on the line, Jess. No way. Pile driver. Pile driver on the floor. I I can't believe it. And now this is it. Mr. Wonderful has ended the career of Roddy Piper. It was an incredible match, but in the end... No! Piper's still alive. Incredible. The fighting spirit of both these men, the animosity they feel for one another, the desire to continue in their careers, it really is unbelievable. What a night this has been. No doubt about it, it has been a happening. And still to come, the World Wrestling Federation Championship, the Hulkster and the Giant. And look at this. No, don't do it, Paul. It's not worth it. You'll be disqualified. I told you. I told you Orndorff's rage would be his undoing. Piper doesn't give Orndorff the opportunity to use the chair. Huh. He might have been better off just letting him use it 
but I guess Piper wants to finish Orndorff himself, and I can't blame him. Another elbow drop. Into the cover. Surely this is it. No! I can't believe it. What a battle this has been. And now Orton slides a chair into the ring. Hey, we may be at the point where Piper don't care no more. He may be happy to sacrifice his own career in order to finish off Orndorff for good. Shoulder breaker by Mr. Wonderful. Into the cover. And no, still, still not quite enough. What a right hand. And Piper wants a timeout. And Mr. Wonderful says, you want to go to the floor. Here, let me help you. You think either man would take the count out win now, Gorilla? At this point, I think both would take it any way they can get it. Atomic drop. And Piper hammering away at that open wound on Orndorff's head. Have you ever seen Mr. Wonderful look so utterly spent? Never. Ruth Orndorff's face rammed into that mat, which is about an inch thick with nothing but concrete beneath it. I think Piper's settling for the counter. No, I spoke too soon. Oh, and maybe he should have. What must Orton be thinking? I happen to know he is very well paid to be Piper's bodyguard. Knowing how devious he can be, no doubt he is looking closely for an opening, a chance to interject himself without the referee noticing. And still we go on, both men's bodies at the breaking point. Pile driver. No, whatever Mr. Wonderful was going for, Piper was able to thwart it. Oh, but Piper missed that drop kick. Oof, back elbow to the face of the rowdy one. He's got him up. Pile driver. Turn around, ref. Is this it? I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Gorilla, I, I'm at a loss for words. You and me both, Jess. Somehow this match goes on. And somehow Piper is fighting back. You have to wonder about the mental state of both men at this point, let alone the physical condition. I gotta hand it to both men. This has been incredible. They have both put in the fight of their lives right when they need it most. But someone has to lose, Jess, and right now it's Roddy Piper on top. I can't even imagine where Piper found the strength to do that. Oh, he went for the sleeper, but Orndorff blocked it. 
And here we go, another pile driver. Hit it. Surely, surely now. It's over, it's finally over. And for Roddy Piper, it is over for good. in the WrestleMania. Andre, please, no, it's not happening. We're friends. We're friends, Andre, please. You can't believe it? Maybe you'll believe this, Hogan. Andre, what are you doing, man? You can't leave like this, man. What are you doing, Andre? Yes or no? Are you or are you not? gonna fight him in Wrestlemania 3 for the World Heavyweight Championship, yes or no? Yeah! Yes, indeed, and that's what brought 93,000 plus here to the Silverdome, Jess. What a confrontation. It's coming up real quick, Gorilla, real quick. Well, we're gonna go right now to Mean Gene Oakland in the locker room area with the world's heavyweight champion, Hulk Hogan. Moments away from the biggest heavyweight title defense for this man ever, Hulk Hogan, you gotta be ready. Well, you know, I hope Pontiac Michigan recovers, man. I'm glad I snuck in early last night, brother. I didn't realize the interstates, the Pontiac Silverdome was in danger, not the 90,000 plus on the inside. It's the 90,000 plus on the outside of the Silverdome. Those are the ones I'm worried about because when I get my hands on that big nasty giant, when he faces the truth, when he feels the wrath of Hulkamania, the day the whole Earth is gonna shake. What are those 90,000 plus Hulkamaniacs on the outside gonna think? I'm not worried about the people at the closed circuit. I'm not worried about the people all around the world. They'll see it. But the intensity of Hulkamania, the way it's turned this whole state upside down, the way the whole world's turned upside down, what are they going to think when the giant hits the ground? He feels the wrath of Hulkamania, and the whole world shakes at my feet. We could conceivably blow the roof off this great facility, the Silver Dome. Right now, let's go back to the booth. Obviously, in the greatest shape of his life, world's heavyweight champion, Hulk Hogan, this is going to be a beauty. Let's go to Howard. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is for the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship. It's scheduled for one fall with a one figure. That seven foot five frame of Andre the Giant, who has literally been brainwashed. 
by that man right there, Bobby the Brain Heenan. No, I disagree with you a little, Gorilla. The man has never had a championship title match. Don't you feel in a 15-year illustrious career that he should be granted one shot at the title? The man never, number one, asked for a title match. Number two, never wanted a title match. He never wanted it. Well, no. your knowledge is wrong because right here he's got one and he definitely asked for it. He ripped the shirt off the champion as well as the crucifix. I figure that's a direct way of asking for it. Yeah, it certainly is, but all that came with the provocation of that guy right there with the white waiter's jacket on, Bobby the Brain Heenan. There he is, seven foot five, 525, neck 24, chest 71, biceps 21, hands 16, wrist 11 inches, forearm 17, thighs 36, calves 22. We could be looking at the next heavyweight champion of the world. And that is what it is all about, what has come between friends and what Bobby Heenan covets more than anything in the world, the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Look at the stare of the champion against the challenger. The irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Look at the size of the giant. I mean, Hogan is six foot eight. Andre is seven foot five. The bell is gone. This one is officially underway. Look at the look of disdain on the face of Andre. What's Hogan saying to him, I wonder? What could Hogan possibly be saying to him? Certainly like to be able to read lips at this point. He's almost, he's hulking up right now. Shoved by Andre and the champion retaliates. Oh, big right hand blocked by the champion. And the Hulkster unloading, going for a slam. Oh, he almost got him up. Oh, oh he collapsed. One, two. Two count two only. Count. Was that two or was that three? Two count only. Ooh, that was close, Gorilla. Shoulder was up. Oh, was that close? Andre thinks he won it just like that. Hogan is hurt. Hogan went for a body slam early in the boat, and he may have injured his back. May have hurt that lower back area for sure with that extreme weight of Andre the Giant. I'm not convinced that wasn't a three count, Gorilla. Oh, and 520 pounds squashing the Hulkster in the corner. Can you imagine how that feels? I think the ring shifted six inches. And now here comes the Hulkster fighting back. And now the Hulkster laying in those fists to the giant cranium of Andre. Those are illegal closed fists.
and the Giants down. I don't believe it. Listen to these people. Andre the Giant is in unfamiliar territory. But not for long. Hogan spent too long admiring his work when he should have been capitalizing. Look at the raw power of the Giant. Manhandling the 300-pound Hogan. It's too early to be going for a cover, though, Jess. It'll take a lot more than that to beat the champion. And look at this from Andre, punishing. Andre going for the cover just gives Hogan a little reminder of what he's up against. Just lets him feel that 520-pound weight on top of it. Oh, and a big knee right to the face of the Hulkster. Very close. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. The Hulkster's still alive here. Barely. The Giant just ragdolling Hogan. This is just a matter of time now. Lateral press by the Giant. How close was that? That was two and nine tenths. But it wasn't three. And the Hulkster there is still fighting the champion. Hulk rocking the big man. Ha ha. Take that. Size 24 boot right in the kisser. Again, this is glorious. The brain already has the Intercontinental title in the bag, and it's just a matter of time now before he gets his hands on the world's heavyweight title. Power slam. That's it. That'll do it. No, no, it won't. I can't believe it. A power slam by the 520-pound giant Hogan has to have cracked ribs. With the Hulkster firing back, never count the World Wrestling Federation champion out. And look at Heenan. What is he thinking? Hogan runs into the giant. He may as well have run into a Mack truck. You know, the brain's got to be feeling good right now. I don't know about that. The Hulkster caught him. 
into the cover. Just the one count at this stage of the match. Just the one count. Can you imagine how demoralizing that is for Hulk Hogan? Yeah, but he just dropped the giant with a big clothesline. These people can sense that the tide is turning. Look at this! He's
Amen.